Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Eve. For any further information on all of the products and the services that I offer, my website link is below. Uh, my most recent lecture will be linked below as well. That's $15 and it covers a very large overview of 2020. I go into very great depth with that. Also below I will put my most recent attunements, which are a, a deeper form of meditation. And I strongly advise you to bring these into your life, whether you want to seek them out for free on YouTube or you want to jump onto my website and look at the ones that I offer. It is one of the greatest gifts that I believe I provide here on this planet. And I bring in very different attunements for different subject matters, whether it's healing, love, ascension, prosperity. So do go in and look at those because the deeper form of meditation, when you do it often, will allow you to grow and ascend and move forward at a much faster pace. And whatever it is that your being and your soul is wanting to work on and integrate, the attunements allow you to do so in a more effortless and peaceful way. So do check those out, whether it's from me or from someone else. It's just something I highly advise you to bring into your spiritual daily or weekly process. Now in this video, I am going to specifically focus on the completion of 2019 and we are doing so with the solar eclipse that is coming in in the late evening of December 25th here Pacific time. If you're on the East Coast or in Europe, that will be on December 26th. This is the last solar eclipse in Capricorn. It is the last solar eclipse and new moon of 2019 and the last one of this decade. It's a very, very powerful one. And it's the beginning of the eclipse corridor. Once we had Jupiter enter Capricorn on December 2nd or 3rd, we begin entering the eclipse corridor. It will complete on the other side of the very powerful lunar eclipse coming in on January 10th, 2020. And I will set aside a separate video for that as we do get into January. So let's look at these energies. We started out the year of 2019 with a solar eclipse on January 5th of 2019. And that was the very first one in Capricorn. This will be the second. Therefore, in this eclipse cycle across Capricorn and Cancer, which is an approximate two year cycle, we're only getting two in the sign of Capricorn. We started out this year and isn't it interesting that we are completing this year with Capricorn as well. Capricorn is the third of the earth signs. I was meditating on what the messages were around the Capricorn energy. And one of them I got was productivity. I was actually getting receptivity as well. Capricorn is the workhorse in the astrological realm. It's very much about what is it we are producing. It also rules time and it rules history. It is the learning from history. It's the learning from our past experiences. It's the def definition of karma. Yes, Capricorn is the definition of karma and also Dharma because karma and Dharma are two ancient Hindu words that are wrapped within one another. Karma is we reap what we sow, and there is no attachment to whether that's bad or good. It's just we are reaping what we are sowing, the seeds that we are planting. And Dharma refers to all of the good that we have been planting. And Dharma is where we are receiving a very good gift, a very special gift, because we put in far more good above and beyond the call of duty. That is Dharma, where we exceeded our mission. We exceeded what we came here to do as a soul or what we set out to do. That is our Dharma. 
And 2020, think of the word 2020. Hindsight is 2020. It's, we're going to be reflecting on the past as we draw onto the present and move forward into the future. That is what 2020 is going to be all about. And we have a whole set of planets lined up in Capricorn. It is showing us that we are learning from our past. We are learning from our mistakes, if we want to call them mistakes. But no mistake goes un unlearned. So mistakes are really opportunities. They are opportunities for growth. And those opportunities will continue to show up in, in our life until we get the lesson. Capricorn energy is so much the teacher. And the planet Saturn rules Capricorn. It is that master teacher where when you go to college or high school, this is going to be that teacher you never forget when you leave because they will give you your hardest books to read. The tests are going to really ask you to go beyond the learning. Capricorn and Saturn is not just about memorization. It's about learning so that you can problem solve. See how you take the learning and then you build knowledge and wisdom upon it. That is the energy of Capricorn. Capricorn is patient. It is steadfast. It is persevering. It does not give up. Why? Because it knows that all of that hard work it put in, there's going to be something. Something's going to show for it. Even if it was a huge lesson that an opportunity fell to the wayside, it did not go through. But guess what? A Capricorn person picks themselves up from that and looks at what the learning was. And it knows that the next venture it's going to go on, it's going to take that learning and that experience. And it's going to know that it has achieved a level of knowledge now. So the next adventure you go on, you're going to take it at a higher level. Or you're going to do more research and you're going to set a stronger foundation the next time around so that it doesn't collapse. Capricorn is all about setting very strong foundations, are, as are all of the Earth signs, but especially Capricorn and Taurus. It's very much about making sure that you've done the groundwork here, that you've planted the seeds and that you've organized everything that you need and you are planning ahead. Capricorn is very much a planner and an organizer. So be aware that as we go into 2020, and this is the last solar eclipse in Capricorn, it's going to give us all of the next 12 months until the winter solstice of 2021 of 2020 to accomplish this task. And so that is the word I want to leave you with in terms of the astrology. It is all about accomplishment. Accomplishing what you set out to do in your financial world, in your career world, in your personal health and well-being, in your family, in your home, and within your love life here. I know Capricorn energy, we don't often talk about love, but love is actually at the core of this. And what I really like about Capricorn in terms of love is they, are, they know when they're ready. And they're, someone is not going to bring an offer to you or you're not going to be ready to offer someone something until you feel at least 75 to 80% ready. You do not have to be 100% there. That's almost an impossibility. But you're going to know when you feel strong enough and ready enough to give someone an offer of love or to receive an offer of love. So let's look a little bit deeper at the numerology here. 2020 in the Tarot deck is the Judgment card or the Karma in the Syrian Tarot deck. 
it's often associated with the air sign of is it associated with the air signs no with with this one i don't want to give it a sign language i know that many people who do tarot have associated judgment with libra or aquarius or even scorpio okay those are the three signs i've often seen out there but i'm going to look at it as you can apply any sign language to it because it is such an overreaching theme karma is essentially what you put out you get back and judgment is or everything that you have created on your soul journey you are getting in 2020 to see that play out for you so 2020 in the in the terms of judgment is going to be a, be a very strong manifestation energy and here the solar eclipse in capricorn is occurring at four degrees of capricorn it's occurring at the very beginning of capricorn therefore we get to really allow the capricorn energy time to build over the next couple weeks and months and really work with it and fine tune it and see what is it, what does it represent for you in terms of responsibility duty obligation and achievement because those are very four big words for capricorn i i'm a little wary with using the word obligation i think duty fits better responsibility achievement and the fourth word i'm going to bring in here is commitment but before you can commit to anything in your life you have to be able to commit to yourself to your readiness and to what it is that matters most to you on your journey here and as we enter january it is a one month and as we add that to 2020 we get two and two is four and then we add the one we have a five five is the energy of change and transformation in the tarot deck it is the hierophant the hierophant and the hierophant is about sacred marriage it's also about being on a spiritual journey a religious journey it's about bringing in your deepest belief systems what do you believe in what is most meaningful for you on your deep spiritual belief journey here that is the hierophant so this is a spiritual journey as we go into january and the entire month of january is going to be focused on that five energy of profound change transformation and spirituality now with the numerology 2020 if i want to reduce it is a four hindsight is 2020 that knowledge that we can pull on from past experiences past learnings and past gifts and i'm going to go one step further and apply this to the entire journey of our soul and our past lives we are not only bringing in throughout the rest of december and the month of january our past experiences and learnings and all the diplomas and certificates we have done in this lifetime we are bringing in the information and knowledge embedded within our core cellular matrix from all of the journey of our soul so don't be surprised if you go into deep dream time and you're having very profound dreams if while you're meditating or in an inner state of reflection or contemplation you get a lot of sudden messages or visualizations that come in for you take those as messages from your soul that is coming to you and being released to you from your own personal akashic records we all have our an, an individual akashic record in the creator akashic library and this is where our soul leaves an imprint of every lifetime and soul journey that we've been on and know that you are being given right now yeah they're showing it to me each and every one of us is being given our akashic record card so we can take it to this library and tap into any memory that we wish 
to tap into now. So if there's something you want to know about your soul's journey, if you're wondering what your life purpose is right now, um, who your sacred beloved is, how to heal a current situation in your life, or how to awaken or bring in more abundance, bring that key card into your Akashic, into the Akashic record library, and just visualize you putting it in through a little computer slot, and then go into inner meditation or go to sleep and ask for a dream to bring this message to you. You could even pull some cards on it and see what comes up, but then you have to be open to receiving the information that's going to come through for you here. Yeah, because I'm really feeling that we have an open doorway to our soul's journey here and to all of the experiences we have ever had as a soul. Now, let me go to the cards that I have here. And if you do want to use the number four as the reduction of the 20, that would be the energy of the emperor. You are, be are becoming an authority of your own life as you move through 2020. And I guarantee you that as we reach the end of 2020, many of you are going to look back and recognize the deep personal growth that you have gone through in this year awaiting us. So let's look at the cards here. And the decks I used are the Hero's Journey, which is one of my personal favorites, the Divination of the Ancients, and of course, the, Steer the Syrian Starseed Tarot. Let's look at the messages here. Thank you all for joining me here today. And please know that at the end of December, beginning of January, I am going to put out another video. I'm just not quite sure yet what I'm being guided to do for it. So from the hero's journey, this is the guidance from this solar eclipse. X marks the spot. See the love in disguise. That is a beautiful card. It's also showing you how the energy from your soul, your soul group, and the divine is coming through to you. And actually, that's a perfect rendition of me giving you the information about accessing your Akashic records by using that unlimited past that you have. You know, seek to access that higher knowledge that you have contained there. But this is a beautiful card because this is a card of the beloved, the divine feminine and the divine masculine holding one another in a very sacred, beautiful embrace. See the love in disguise. So I want to read some of that for you because this is the part of the hero's journey where I believe the hero is on the quest and is reaching towards the reward. It's a very powerful part of the journey, though. It's the supreme ordeal. These cards are here to help you put all that you've learned to the test. It is now time to own your power and to alchemize your bigger challenges into blessings for you and all those that are influenced by you. The supreme ordeal can also be looked at as the supreme opportunity. It's about bringing back your power. About bringing back your power. And oftentimes, it's interesting how there will be a blessing hidden in disguise. That idea that when we're going through a very, very deep challenge that has us almost on our knees, we know that somehow, if we can get through it on the other end of it, there's going to be a blessing. Your unpleasant challenge, challenges right now or life experiences are showing you precisely where to shine a light 
so that you can become a more awakened and powerful version of yourself. So this card is also guiding you to see where in your life you have perhaps been out of balance. Have you been doing, doing, doing and giving, giving, giving and not being open to receive? That was where I was tested on pretty much for the last three weeks. I've been tested in that zone and it was a very, very challenging time for me. I was literally on my knees, okay? But I, I was aware that I had to reach ground zero. And I was aware that in that moment, my soul was shining through. So sometimes what we think is real has to be ripped from us so that the truth can truly shine through. And that's where X marks the spot. It's about looking at where in your life you need to bring in greater balance so that you can come from a place of really positive giving and receiving because we have to be able to do both. We cannot follow through with our mission on this earth if we cannot both give and receive. We have to be good at both. And this is what this card is speaking to us on. It's also, though, showing us where we need to let go of our ego and where our fears are still feeding us. And here's a way to look at it. Turn your challenges into opportunities. Greet the unpleasant aspects of life at the door laughing, for you know that they come bearing gifts. And here's the mantra for you. Shining a light on the part of your heart that loves you makes you more magnetically open to love from the one that you are with. So it's about shining light on, on the part of your heart where maybe you don't love yourself or love yourself as much. Whatever part of your heart, that light now needs to be shined upon. Now, let's. this is the guidance, and these are the messages. So I brought in first the divination of the ancients. The first message I got was thunder and lightning. Power. There we go. It fits with the 2020, which is the judgment card. It fits with the emperor, which is number four. And it fits with this message. It's all about moving further into your power. You have so many strengths, yet you allow other people to take away your power. That is the message for some of you. When your words are discounted or your actions mocked, your light fades. You may tell yourself that it doesn't matter as long as you know the truth. But the danger comes when, the, when you begin to believe that other people can dismiss you. Now is the time for you to take a stand and to assert your authority so that you can grow fully into your power and shine your light. Otherwise, you are denying not only yourself, but you are denying others who could benefit from your gifts. Learn the authority of thunder and stand bold. Okay, so every time someone puts you down or doesn't recognize who you are, doesn't recognize the gifts you bring, the love you bring, the work that you're doing, you stand in your power and you let them know that you are doing good work. Yes, could they turn around and reprimand you or fire you? Absolutely. But you know what? This is a choice you have to make. And you, I'm not saying stand up and yell from the rooftop in your power. I'm saying stand up and be counted and you can do it in a gentle, loving and kind way. But let people know that you are there and that your work matters, whether they want to recognize it or not. The other message here is seeing lightning can also denote an opportunity to express and cleanse yourself 
of any deep-seated anger that you may be holding. So for others, the message is not necessarily about standing up and speaking your truth to a boss, for example, or to a life partner who's, who's not recognizing what you're bringing in. It could be that you've been withholding anger, that you're angry at someone in your life and you've been pushing that anger down, not acknowledging it, and you may not even be fully aware of it. And it's going to bubble over. So this is a word of advice to cleanse yourself right now of anything that has been frustrating you and angering you and irritating you over this, the last couple months and even throughout this entire year of 2019. So look at this card as a reiteration of it's time for you to recognize your anger and what you're angry about and to do something about it. Lightning is a buildup of energy that is seeking release. Okay, and getting this card is telling you that there's still time to manage a potentially difficult situation that could be arising. Now for this, I also pulled a tarot card as deeper clarification. And what did I get? Ace of Flames. That's the Ace of Fire. Well, it fits perfectly because the Ace of Flames is stand. What did I just say? Stand in your power. Be counted. Light your flame so that everyone can see it. You are visible now. This can also be bringing someone an offer of love because the Ace of Flames is about love, but it's also about wanting to create something brand new and powerful in your life. A creative venture, maybe starting a new job, starting a new pathway on your life mission. It is without a doubt about fully lighting up your mission, your heart, and your pathway, lighting up your being. It is time. Follow your inner flame and your inner guidance. I love, love that message. I'm going to put it right here beneath. So what was the second message we got from the divination of the angels? It was the card geomancy. Patience. The pyramids were not built in a day. They were not even built in a decade. Now, I'm not saying... I'm asking you to wait for a decade, but see how the pyramids of Giza are behind there? What you want is going to come to pass. The answer here is yes, but you need to have patience. Everything is happening in perfect divine timing. It is happening in alignment with the pyramids of Giza, okay? Because the pyramids of Giza in Egypt are one of the symbols of great divine spiritual timing. They were created for that, to serve that purpose, okay? The pyramids of Giza were created as a direct connection between heaven and earth. And it's interesting how that's a symbol here, a sign in this card. It's also telling me that 2020 is a wrapping up of what we what began coming into our lives in full force in 2012. That that cycle of us moving into personal ascension, we are really reaching a much higher state of enlightenment as we move through 2020 and get to the end of it. But you have to have patience with your journey and you have to persevere and not give up here. Yes, what you are asking for will be given. Hidden factors, though, may be at play. So relax and allow everything to unfold naturally. Your eyes may be fixed on the outcome, but be sure to enjoy every bit of the journey along the way. So remember, it's about the journey. The adventure is the journey. It's not the destination here. Always trust the mystery. Recognize that great things are unfolding behind the scene to help you get to your desired outcome. And the other message here is don't give up. Okay, and the last thing I'm getting here is 
for some of you, you need that patience card because you want to know that you have time. So I'm here to tell you, yes, there's no need to rush in here. The universe is working in the background to bring about your desires. Keep having a positive focus, though. Recognize that all is in divine order. Maintain trust in it as you step through the unknown and into your destiny here. This is a card of destiny. 2012, I was getting a feeling as I was getting this video ready that unlike any other year we've entered into or decade, this one is really about fulfilling each of our individual soul missions and the mission of the human collective. So let me get out the card that is giving a clarification for the geomancy. Beautiful, divine justice, there we go. Number 11, the manifester. Divine justice is the scales of balance. This is another card of patience. You have to wait for everything to be balanced out. This is also a card of karma ruled by the scales of balance. This all the air signs, but particularly Libra. And see how she's blindfolded here? So there are hidden factors afoot that need to unfold. This message for some of you with the geomancy card can mean that it's in the time of air energy that what you are asking for will unfold. Well, the first air sign we have coming in is Aquarius, and that will come in around January 19th or 20th. And Mercury is going to be retrograding back into very late Aquarius. We're therefore going to have that energy with us all of February and into March. So it's going to be a pretty long window of time and then we have Venus retrograding in Gemini and in the sign of Gemini for four months in 2020 from April through July. So again, we're going to have a strong emphasis on air energy. And then we have the fall with Libra. So I'm getting a strong message for some of you around things unfolding when we're in air energy. So please pay attention for, for that. But also remember, do not dive into drama. One of the beauties that air energy gives us is the ability to have discernment, to work and make decisions from a place of inner clarity. And if you need to take time and look deeper and sit with things so that you get to that inner clarity and that inner truth, then do so. Because coming from a place where you know what the truth is and you have discernment is so very important here. And wait until the blindfold is off because you want to be able to see with a clear vision here, not with a blindfold on. Let's look at the last card I pulled from the Divination of the Ancients. Oh my goodness, I love it. It's one of my favorite cards in the whole deck. Spells. It's the card of alchemy. It very much corresponds with temperance. So again, we're getting a little bit of a message here around patience, patience with what you are creating here, with what you are manifesting. Alchemy, something you hold dear, a relationship, a job, an interest, an object, or even yourself is going to transform mysteriously into something even more precious to you. This card indicates that you are starting to discover the possibilities that the art of transform transformation is offering you. Possibilities you hadn't even realized were out there. As you learn more, you will find that your needs change and a kind of evolution takes place where you find what you desire is only what is best for you. So the message here for so many of us is what you thought maybe you most wanted is not actually what you want. There's going to be something even better, but allow the alchemy and the transformation of your journey to occur. You have the Midas touch. You can turn anything into gold. You will be supported in gaining a new sense of self-worth self 
which is going to draw all that you deserve and desire directly to you. So you are going to get what you deserve and what you desire. And that is in alignment with divine justice. And the card I pulled as the clarifier is, wow, there we go. Karma. It's judgment. So here we go again. We're back to what I said in the very beginning of this reading here. We are going to manifest what our soul has been working on for lifetimes to manifest. Your karma and your dharma is coming in here. The other message where the spells card is, not only is this a time of great transformation, remember that you have the power at any moment in time to change whatever situation is before you. Believe in your self-worth. Believe in your self-love. Have positive expectations and know that from that, you have the ability to succeed. Your positive and purest intentions are the key here of your manifestation. Okay? I wanted to read something from the karma card here. I was feeling an extra message coming through. Yes. As we open up our karmic cachet, which gently ripples back to us from the slow waters of our souls, we determine whether we have truly learned the lessons we came to learn. Preparing to ascend from this level of consciousness or whether we have yet to explore more spins on the wheel of reincarnation. It is the hour of resurrection, or is it, a, is it the hour of rebirth? For many, I'm feeling like this is coming full circle, that you are at the end of the journey you began. Because think of that, this, this is card number 20. The last card is the world, number 21. We are going to reach the world. 21, and we're doing it in 2021. Isn't that interesting? So 2020 is preparing us to fully reach the world. We are going to do it, and we're either going to do it sometime in 2020. For many of us, I feel it's going to come towards the end of 2020, and for others, it's going to come in the beginning of 2021. Our journeys are all unique and individual here. And for others, you may be getting it as we start 2020, okay? Let's not, let's release the timing here and know that this is all happening in your own divine timing. Okay, I pulled three more cards, came out of the deck as the last clarifiers for this journey. So this is what you're coming into, the Six of Chalices the six of cup. You have now all the cups you need. Six is the number of harmony. And January 1st, 2020 is a number six, one, one, four. It's the number of the lovers. But in this one, I'm being told it, it's corresponding to the six of cups. You have all you need and the cups you're bringing with you are the cups of love. All those souls that are meant to be with you on this journey are going to be with you. And this could be some souls from your past coming back in to be with you on this journey. This is a beautiful card. It's also about recognizing and loving your inner child, the innocence that you carry, that inner faith and trust that this journey is a beautiful one and that everything you need is with you and the rewards are going to come for you because the six is always a very harmonious number in all of the tarot decks and it is a number of abundance and there we go star seed zero so as we go into 2020 you are indeed beginning a new journey here and this could be a new karmic journey a new journey of lessons a new journey of experiences a new adventure and you're going to leap forward with faith and trust and you're going to bring those six cups of love with you and the last message we have here is the chariot you're going to go forward knowing that your divine power is with you that is lord krishna 
holding the reins of the five horses, the five senses. So this card in this deck of the chariot, which is number seven, is telling you you're on a very profound spiritual journey as you enter 2020, and this solar eclipse is guiding you through it. This solar eclipse, by the way, is very much igniting the first six months of 2020. So this entire reading I'm giving you for today, go back and re-listen to it because it is about the first six months of 2020. Allow Lord Krishna to guide you here. I want to wrap it up by reading what the chariot has to say here. The reins in the hands of Lord Krishna are the depiction of right mind, which directs the senses to move forward. He reminds us that we are not alone in this mission of life and that we always have divine guidance in our race forward towards our goals. It reminds starseed, and we have starseed right there, that when we connect to our higher mind, divine justice, with clarity of intent and purpose, we move forward in the light of divine guidance. Beautiful messages. I love you all. Merry Christmas.